Welcome to Collector Showdown. Today, two vintage clothing collectors compete for the ultimate fantasy prize, a prize that we're keeping secret from them both until the very end. Oh, it's a huge enjoyment factor. It's a hobby. People do seem to think that I collect junk. Charles Worth, I'm feeling the pressure. Good. Get that shop while we do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hardcore vintage collector. I think we have a contest now. <laughs> On Collector Showdown, there are two challenges. First, a test of knowledge. Second, a test of skill. If our contestants are tied after the first two rounds, we go to a sudden death showdown. The stakes are high and the winner takes all. The prize will be a dream come true for only one of these two collectors. Will it be Cher, the avid collector of everything from ball gowns to army jackets? Or Ellen, the 1940s and 50s fan with hundreds and hundreds of vintage pieces of clothing in her collection? You're just gonna have to watch and find out. Our vintage expert today is Elizabeth Mason. She is the owner of this boutique, The Paper Bag Princess, with locations in Beverly Hills and Toronto. She has made national television appearances on The Oprah Show, Access Hollywood, The Style Network and CNN, and has been featured in several major magazines. She is also the author of The Rag Street Journal and Valuable Vintage. The actual term vintage, anything sort of 20 to 25 years back. So we're looking at the 80s as being vintage and then the 70s and the 60s as kind of being that term retro. Um, then you get into what's really thought of as vintage hardcore and that's the 50s and the 40s um, and certainly anything into the 30s and the 20s. A lot of times people think that when they're shopping vintage it's sort of like shopping second hand and they're going to be able to get things really cheap. Well, not really. Most of our sort of high-end designer vintage dresses will run around $300, but they could go up to $3,000. People who actually collect clothing. They're not your normal collectors. You'd be surprised who they really are and just the vast amount of things that they collect. I wouldn't say that a serious collector has ever really put any limitations like, that's it, I'm not buying another piece. <laughs> nope, I've never heard them say that. My name is Ellen and I collect vintage clothing, hats, shoes, dresses, coats, everything and I exclusively wear vintage. I don't wear anything new. My name is Cher and I collect all sorts of different vintage clothes, hats, shoes, anything that's got different styles from different time periods I like to have. Well it started for me in high school and I was looking for a grade 13 prom dress and I picked up this pink 50s prom dress and tried it on and it fit perfectly and I adored it. When I was a teenager I used to go shopping at Value Village and instead of going to the mall I would just go there and um, basically play dress up and buy different funky sort of stuff and as it turned out it ended up that a lot of stuff that I was getting was vintage clothes. I would imagine I might have four or five hundred dresses, two hundred pairs of shoes, a hundred coats. I think it's probably getting somewhat excessive. I think I probably have to get rid of a lot of things. I can walk into a vintage store, find something I like, put it on and it fits. I find they're all unique. You don't go into a store and find five of the same dresses. And the detailing on it is so different than I think you find today. It wasn't until a couple years ago that I actually realized that all the clothes that I had amassed were actually vintage clothes. And uh, what I really liked was just, there were different styles, like things that you wouldn't be able to see or find at the mall. So you could dress differently from the masses. Oh, it's a huge enjoyment factor. It's a hobby. Most of my collection is about style rather than designer label. Um, in the future, I would like to get some designer pieces. Some thing by Pucci would be really nice because he does such fun and uh, sort of crazy designs. People do seem to think that I collect junk, but uh, I just, I like it. You know, you do it for fun. Ellen, they tell me that you have a classical vintage clothing collection. I don't know anybody else who collects vintage to the extent that I do. I have mostly modern, kitsch, and junk. I know exactly what I like. It'll be interesting to see whose clothing collection comes out on top and whose knowledge wins. So I'll see you at the competition. This is the first time our contestants actually get to meet each other. 
Cher. This is Ellen. Ellen, this is Cher. Nice Hi there. To meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, Ellen, what are you bringing to this competition? I'm a hardcore vintage collector. That's all I wear. That's all I buy. I don't buy anything new. Cher, what do you think about your competition here? I think it sounds pretty steep, but I have a lot of collection of different styles as well. Two vintage clothing lovers, let the competition begin. <laughs> Round one is a test of knowledge. I will ask each contestant nine questions related to the world of vintage fashion. Whoever gets the most questions right wins round one. Now you both say you love vintage fashion. Now it's time to see who is the bigger know-it-all when it comes to vintage clothing. Who designed the first little black dress in 1926? Quick answers. That's an easy one. It's an easy one. Cher, let's find out how easy. Coco Chanel. Ellen, what's your answer? Coco Chanel. The actual answer is Coco Chanel. You both got this one right. Since she introduced the little black dress in 1926, it's been the epitome of timeless fashion. And actually, when uh, it did come out, American Vogue compared it to a Ford because it's just universally popular and it became such a fashion basic. So that's one one for both of you. What was the distinguishing feature of women's suit jackets from back in the 80s? Cher. Uh, they were oversized and had shoulder pads. Ellen, what do you say? Shoulder pads. You both know the 80s, the answer is shoulder pads. Really, the 80s were all about the oversized shoulders with the uh, wonderful shoulder pads. And it was almost in every single piece of clothing, suit, jackets, dresses, tops, and uh, so you both got that one right too. What punk band did Vivian Westwood design for that revolutionized fashion in the mid to late 70s? Cher, what is your answer? The Sex Pistols. Ellen? Just a complete guess, Sex Pistols. Wow, and the actual answer is the Sex Pistols. Vivian Westwood had a thing going with Malcolm McLaren, who later became the manager of the punk band, the Sex Pistols, and when they played their first big gig in 1976, they wore Vivian's designs, bringing the punk look in with the zips, rips, and chains to the entire world. This is pretty good, 3-3 three, three for both of you. What type of hat was Jackie Kennedy's signature hat that she helped to make famous back in the early 60s? You guys are quick. <laughs> sure, what's your answer? It was a pillbox hat. And I believe it was designed by Cristobal Balenciaga. Ellen? Pillbox hat. Pillbox hat, you both answered pillbox hat and you both got this answer right. It was the pillbox hat. And, and they were around long before Jackie Kennedy, but uh, she is the one who definitely made those famous. 4-4 four, four for both of you. Who was the first known fashion designer to put his or her name on a label in a garment? Cher, what do you think? Charles Worth. Ellen? Dior. The answer is Charles Frederick Worth. He wow. was the very first to put his name in a label, and that was back in the 19th century. He's an English-born designer who really made his mark in Paris, and he's the one who turned the art of dressmaking from a low-prestige job into haute couture, and that's why he is known as the father of haute couture. So, Cher, you got a leg up. Who 
invented denim jeans as we now know them. Cher, tell me your answer. Levi Strauss. Ellen, what do you say? Levi Strauss. The answer is Levi Strauss. It was back in 1973 when he and a tailor from Nevada patented an idea to put copper rivets on stress points of waist-high overalls. That's what blue jeans used to be called. That he did that to strengthen them. Yes, but it wasn't until 1934 that Levi's made their first jeans for women, the Lady Levi's. So, six, five is the tally. Who was Givenchy's muse for his collections in the late 50s and 60s? Cher, tell me your answer. Audrey, Audrey Hepburn. Hepburn. Oh, I have support. Were you talking about the uh, vehicle or no. John <laughs> Okay. No and the answer is Audrey Hepburn. Hubert de Givenchy, he wasn't shy about telling people that Audrey Hepburn was his muse. In fact, he was the one who dressed her in some of her more famous roles, including Sabrina, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and How to Steal a Million. Cher, you are ahead. What is the most desirable and expensive fur in the world? Are you set, Cher? What's I your... I think so. Okay. I'm gonna guess that it's ermine. Ellen, what is your answer? Sable. And the answer is... Sable. Yeah. It is sable. Russian sable, in fact, is the most expensive fur in the world, and it's highly valued for its rarity, lush, dark color, and deep, silky pelt. So, there's one question left. <laughs> Ellen, you can still tie this. What type of heel that first became really popular back in the 1960s was often referred to as trainer heels. If you get this one right, Cher, you win round one. Are you are you ready, Cher? Yeah, I'm. I don't think that it's right, but I'm just gonna say wedge. I think that it's the little small heels, but I don't know what the word is to describe them. Ellen, do you know? I said wedge heel, but it may be a kitten heel. That's what I was thinking of. Is it kitten heel? Yes, it is kitten heel, but that means no, Cher, you win round one of Collector Showdown. Yay! Ellen, you can still make it up. Round two, if you win round two, you can force a sudden death showdown tiebreaker. And then one of you will get to claim our fabulous mystery prize. I feel good. I feel a little bit more confident going into round two. Going into the next round, I feel a little bit worried, a little bit apprehensive. Hopefully I can maintain the lead and uh, win this. Hope I still have a chance in this one. That's it, round two of Collector Showdown next. In round one of Collector Showdown, Cher defeated Ellen in a test of knowledge. So now, Ellen must pick up her skirts in round two to stay in the game. Your challenge is to scour this value village and find the one vintage clothing rack that is in this store. You then have to find the most valuable piece of vintage clothing in that rack. Cher, you won round one. So if you win this round, you win Collector Showdown. You get to claim the fabulous mystery prize. Ellen, you didn't <laughs> win round one. But if you do win this skills challenge, then you can force a sudden death showdown and still have a chance at that prize. Before we start, I would like to introduce Elizabeth Mason. She is the owner of Paper Bag Princess in Hi. Toronto and Beverly Hills. Cher, how do you feel going into this? 
I feel intrigued. I'm wondering where this vintage rack is. How big is this vintage rack? And what's going to be on it? And how about you, Ellen? Good. Good? Are you allowed to shop while we do this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I take a long time to shop, but today you do only have five minutes for this challenge. So are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Oh. <laughs> well, it looks like you found the vintage rack. Now, normally the last thing I ever say about vintage when you're choosing a piece is to look at the label because I don't want you to be seduced by the label alone. But considering this is a challenge and we are looking for the most valuable piece, then the label's very, very, very important. We are at three minutes. There's two minutes left. All right, Ellen has put down the electric blue dress. Are we including 80s as vintage? Or are we oh, yes, just retro? Actually, yeah. 80s, 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 80s is definitely vintage. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Five minutes up, Cher. One back. No thinking. All right. So we have both Ellen and Cher here with their treasure finds. Okay. Starting with Cher's, I guess. Um, well, I think she went for it because she thought the fact that it's beaded is probably the most expensive piece, whether or not she had seen the label. Unfortunately, the beading on this is probably done in India or China, so it's not a hand-beaded piece. All right, well, let's hear about Ellen's piece. What was interesting when I was watching Ellen, I was saying, because what happens sometimes is that you're, you're looking at the bigger picture, and you have to sort of hone in and go for the smaller details. And that's what I was saying. And you notice the cuff detail on this. And when you touch this, you can feel that this is silk. This is a silk chiffon. And then it has a beautiful um, faceted uh, little rhinestone button here with a little cameo in it. And then I noticed there was an another one back here. And as far as the label is concerned, well, it's an Albert Nippon, so it's definitely a designer label. And again, it's from the 80s. You can feel those squishy shoulder pads in there. So just out of curiosity, what are the price tags on these dresses? $49.99. Forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine ninety nine and nine dollars. <laughs> Miss Treasure. Ellen, if you want to win Collector Showdown, you need to win this round. To force the Sudden Death Showdown. Cher, if you win this round, that's it. Game over. You are the winner of Collector Showdown and get to claim our fabulous mystery prize. So now it's time, Elizabeth, who wins round two skills challenge of Collector Showdown? I'm gonna have to say it's the Albert Nippon. <laughs> Ellen, you have forced the Sudden Death yeah. Showdown challenge. Last minute, I had the beaded dress and I had that Hannah Mori in my hand and blast my indecision, but I just went with the one, the wrong one. It was a really tough one. It was, you had to look at the label, I suppose, more than what you might go for. You should uh, be more decisive. I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm glad this happened. In Sudden Death Showdown, our contestants have to correctly identify the designer in a series of pictures of epic vintage outfits. If they both get the answer right, we continue. If they both get it wrong, we continue. The first to give a correct answer when the other one does not wins the game and gets to claim our fabulous mystery prize. This is what it all comes down to. Now remember, Ellen, you won round two, but you didn't win round one of Collector Showdown, so you can still win with the Sudden Death Showdown. Cher, you won round one, and you can still take this game in Sudden Death Showdown if you correctly identify this picture when Ellen does not. All right, set, ready, go. Name the designer. Cher? Dior. Ellen? Dior. Neither of you right? Uh, Givenchy. Oh. Next. Cher? 
Could be last one. Ellen? I figured Jean-Paul Gaultier. One of you got this answer right. One of you, right now, is the winner of Collector Showdown. The answer is, it's Vivian Westwood. Oh, good she you. is the designer of this iconic fashion outfit. And Cher, you are the winner of Collector Showdown. Thank Congratulations. You. Ellen, you didn't win Collector Showdown, but you put up a darn good fight. I did. Is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, I mean, I imagine the only thing I could have done is maybe read up on designers and associated designer styles with a look. We don't want you to walk away empty-handed. We have a consolation gift here, which is from Elizabeth Mason's Paper Bag Princess Shop. And in memory of the sudden death showdown that you forced, there is one of these limited editions uh, icon fashion t-shirts in here for you, as well as one of her books so that uh, next time you can read up on it. <laughs> and there Thank you go. You. Thanks, Thanks for very playing. Much. You won round one, you didn't win round two, the test of skill, but then you took it in the sudden death showdown. So now it's time to claim your fabulous mystery prize. You are getting $1,000 store credit to spend here in Paper Bag Princess. Today, you're gonna get the help of Elizabeth Mason, the Hollywood dresser of the stars. She has dressed Renee Zellweger, Julia Roberts, the Olsen Twins, just to name a few. So you're gonna get the help of Elizabeth Mason and her team of experts because we're gonna add a little bit more pressure to this. We're gonna give you five minutes to pick out as many outfits as you want to. What do you think? I'm excited. <laughs> excited? How excited? Very excited. Excellent. Well, $1,000, you might as well uh, start now. Okay. You know, start, so, okay. <laughs> okay, so but what about Gucci? Okay. Well, I liked, actually I was I thinking, like no, this. I saw this and I thought this was fabulous. Mm, it's no, no, it's really colored. cute. No, the, I don't know. Colors colors I, I would oh. like something more like that. Or Are like there? That or like. You can tell, dressing this. Yeah. 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 Perfect. What do you think? Yeah, okay, it's fine. It's my favorite. Like blues and greens are my favorite colors. Okay. Nothing in baby pink. You can tell. Oh, Chanel, those are nice pieces. Yeah, those are good. This is really sexy on. And you've got the okay, body yep. for it. Yep. Right? That was gorgeous. And that's 80s vintage. You were talking, worrying about Yeah, no, I like 80s vintage good. stuff. I like it. I like it for sure. That's too Okay. How many minutes do I have left, please? Time count, four minutes down, one minute left. 30 seconds left. Woo. This is that. actually really great, little costume suit. You're doing exceedingly well. I don't think we can put another piece in the dressing room. Cher, you got a good handful in your, yeah. Arms, 10, <laughs> let's nine, see, let's see, let's see. Okay. eight, oh, sorry, I don't mean seven, <laughs> six, five, <laughs> Four, See, I really think she should try three, this on. Three, two, Put that one. In Time's up. Okay, show and tell time. Let's go. Cher, you've got two really big piles of clothes here. So how fun was that? Five minutes to pick out like yeah, pretty that's much not anything. Enough time. <laughs> well, you know what? It's uh, time to try on some of these treasures because I've got a thousand dollar store credit burning a hole in this envelope. So, go, go, go! Wow! Holy! <laughs> it's got nice lines, curves. Would you wear this one? Well, I don't know where, but it's nice. Uh, you could wear that wherever you wanted. <laughs> That's like so well. pretty. It's really cute. Pretty, 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 pretty. That's Emilio Pucci. And that's very, very reminiscent of the Pucci's that Marilyn Monroe wore. And with your blonde hair, the colors are just gorgeous on you. All right. Let's see. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like this too. I would wear this more places. I it's really a good. You were right with the beige colors, the gold and beige. This yeah, is Leonard. Nice. You familiar with Leonard? A no. contemporary of Pucci is. Mmm, that's really different. Mmm. What do you think of that? I really like it. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's wow. delicious looking, isn't it? Well, that's very Ooh. different. 60s. Hmm? This one too. Mm -hmm. yep. 
It's an early Louis Perrault. It's very, very cute. All right, Cher. What's it going to be? I can't decide. I want this one, and I want this one, and I want this one. I want everything. And I Cheers. think this one here takes up pretty much the whole thousand. Oh, yes, I know. You really should buy yourself something that's absolutely something you would never splurge that much money on. This one I would really like to have because it is a Poochie, and I would... I did actually mention earlier that I would really like to have And it'll some always Poochie. appreciate in value. If I go for option number two, I can get this. Lay on and dress. A and Poochie a Poochie scarf. scarf. So ah, oh. you know, it's sounding as if it's yeah. really it, it's, between it's really these good. two options. She's like, yeah, but yeah, but oh. I'm gonna have to go with a Poochie just because oh. it is a Poochie oh. and I did already say that I needed some, and I want some. Oh, it's a question of need, not just a question of want. We all need a poochie. I think Everybody you have to wrap this up. Everyone does need a poochie. <laughs> wrap it up. So, Cher, are you happy with your decision? I'm ecstatic. You're I can't ecstatic that I finally have a poochie. Woohoo! Well, excellent, yeah. excellent. So this was quite the experience, then, wasn't it? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And thank you too. Oh, you're very welcome. And just remember, if you ever get tired of it, bring it back here. <laughs> we'll sell it again. <laughs> we'll see you next time when two more collectors show down for the experience of a lifetime. Here for a while. Mailing list. Oh, here. <laughs> yeah. Where's the boy? Do you see those little yeah, tiny pockets amazing. inside? Yeah. It's Wait a second, I need to try this one. <laughs> oh, careful. This is gorgeous. I would let that out of your hands. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Look at how cute this is. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.